What up? This is Caroline with the CWC podcast, where we believe that life without your favorite foods is not worth living. I'm going to be talking a lot about my journey to food freedom. And of course, I will always keep it real by sharing the good, the bad, and of course, the ugly. Yeah. Welcome to the CWC podcast. <laughs> Yay. I'm so excited. I am so excited too. So I, first of all, it's nice to meet you. I feel like the more episodes I do with guests who I've never met before, it is, it's just nice to meet you and see you in person. And, you know, I obviously like have been looking at your form and your Instagram and stuff. And I love your aura, everything about you. Um, and I'm just, so Thank how, you. how did you stumble upon the CWC podcast? So um, thank you so much for having me as well. Whenever I discovered you like four weeks ago, never did I think that we would be sitting here having a conversation, but there's always meaning behind something. And I feel like we were meant to cross path, cross paths and, mm -hmm. and I'm excited. Um, but four weeks ago, I had an explant and I was just searching for people who looked like me, um, had been through an explant, uh, just anybody that I can relate to that didn't feel so alone. And I came across your podcast. I came across your Instagram account and I was hooked. I listened to so many podcasts and I, I, my mind was just blown. I was just blown away by your symptoms and how similar they were to some of mine, but yet I didn't really know what those symptoms were, like what they meant. Right. So, I mean, that's crazy that just four weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. Four weeks ago. Um, I, yeah, I had to make a pretty tough decision four weeks ago and I had to make the decision that I thought was going to be best for me. So I did not think that I would be sitting here with an explant, but here I am. And I feel so much better than I have felt in the last four years that I, I'm just, I'm ever so grateful for like where I am now. And I feel like the infection that I got was a blessing in disguise because I wouldn't have known. I would have thought that all these symptoms that I had or what was going on inside my body was just me getting older. I thought everything was because I was getting older and I accepted that as this is my new normal. Like these, right. these symptoms that these things that I'm experiencing, these weird things are all my new normal now. And I just accepted that. <laughs> I just and thought it was normal. And so you didn't know, like when you explanted four weeks ago, you didn't know or go into it thinking that it could be related. Correct. Correct. Not it at wasn't all. until after you explanted. Correct. Yes. So in uh, 2016, I was diagnosed with breast cancer and I decided just to go through the reconstruction process. I that's just kind of what you do. I mean, I was only 40 years old. I had just turned 40. I'd found a lump myself. It ended up being breast cancer. And I just wanted to put myself back together, fix myself. I just wanted to be like I was before, you know, mm -hmm. we, our kids were young. We were still, you know, going on vacation and going places where I was going to be in a bathing suit. And I didn't want to be flat. Yeah. I just, I didn't want that. And you go through the whole process of, you know, meeting with doctors and plastic surgeons and you feel like this is the right thing to do. Like this is okay. And so, um, I went through the expanders process and I had my permanent implants placed in 2017. So as soon as that happened, I gained 20, 25 pounds, like fast, fast within just a few months and I nothing had changed. I had uh, along the, around the same time that I had uh, my implants, my permanent implants place. I also had a preventative hysterectomy. Okay. And so I had done a ton of research on that, <laughs> Yeah. but I didn't do hardly any research on implants, none, but I'd read about hysterectomy and what kind of impact that's going to have on your body, both like physically, sexually, all that stuff. Yeah. So I thought that everything that was going on was from the hysterectomy. Now, okay. four weeks later that my implants are gone. None of that was related to the hysterectomy in my age, none of it. Um, so in 2017, when I had the implant, the permanent implants placed, I gained a lot of weight and it was fast. And it was not like me because I was working out 
every day, um, eating good. And so to gain this weight and I couldn't, and I didn't even know where it was coming from. I was like, well, right. this must be from all the side effects of the hysterectomy. This is what my new normal is. Um, but terrible brain fog. I had terrible brain fog. Like my sister and my husband, like would make jokes about it, you know, because it was just like, I couldn't remember anything. Yeah. And, and it was, they weren't being mean. It was just like, you know, my husband would be like, honey, I, I told you that. And my sister would be like, my God, she's like, you can't remember anything. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, nope, I guess it's just, you know, just my new normal, just because I had cancer. I don't know. It, we yeah. called it like cancer brain. <laughs> it's like, it's I weird can, though. Yeah. It was so weird. It's like your brain uh, just stops. <laughs> I could not think right. I, I could not. I could not think of people's names. I couldn't think of places. I couldn't remember. Like my husband would tell me something or my kids would tell me something. And I could not remember. I would have to write everything down. Mm -hmm. And I just, I honestly thought it was because of the hysterectomy and the, the changes in my hormones. Um, so the weight gain, the brain fog, terrible stomach bloat, terrible stomach bloat. Like huh. it was weird. Um, come to find out from you saying the frequent urination, I had no idea that the two were related. Isn't that crazy? The, the bladder stuff is the weirdest, in my opinion, that every woman I've talked to that had breast implant illness or has it says mm -hmm. the same thing about the peeing. And I'm like, yeah, that is so weird. Like, why does it cause you to have an overactive bladder? I mean, it's just bizarre. It is bizarre. And I just, again, you think that all these little things don't mean anything. Because they're not really connected. Like you can't connect overactive bladder to brain fog. Like if you go to the doctor, they're like, well, it has nothing to do with that. Like that's a completely different mechanism. And, but yeah. it is all somehow related when you, you realized it. And, you know, most women I speak to who explant, they, and those symptoms go away. It's like, that makes no sense whatsoever. Like for all of those to just magically get better yes. after removing your implants. Yes. And I didn't even realize that that was a symptom until I listened to one of your podcasts where you talk about your symptoms and it's just like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I had that too. And yeah. I never in a million years would have connected the two. I mean, yeah. cause you like, I know some people have really debilitating like breast implant illness symptoms, but mine weren't like that. They were yeah. just like little things that I thought I was just getting older. Yep. Like I just did not make the connection whatsoever. And, um, I'm really close with my sister and she has acquaintances that have had breast implant illness. And she would talk to me about it a lot. And I'd be like, but I don't have that. Like, I'm not sick. Like there's right. nothing with me, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. You don't feel, you don't necessarily feel sick. You just, right. it's all, like you said, all of those really small random things that you are like, okay, I guess. I guess this is just me getting older and I'll just have to live like this. And it's really bizarre how you justify it in your mind because you really don't have an answer to explain why. And no, do I mean, I spent so much money on doctors looking for answers and I got so, I really did get to the point one day where I was like, I'm not spending any more money. I, I don't want to keep hemorrhaging money on right. very expensive. You know, we don't have health insurance. Not that that would have helped anyway, but like I, I've, I'm going to see specialists and I'm getting no answers. I'm done. I guess I'm just going to live like this for the rest of my life. And like you, I didn't know, like I didn't know until after I booked my explant that it was, could be breast implant illness. I had just decided on an intuition, literally saying in my body, you need to get these out of your body. I had no idea that it could be breast implant illness. So I made a post on Facebook and said, you know, I've decided to get an explant. I talked to one of my girlfriends who had just had one. And when I had a ton of messages come in after that and comments of, oh my gosh, I'm getting mine out, or I've been thinking of getting mine out. I haven't been feeling well. And I literally just began connecting dots with all these other real women sharing symptoms. That's when I was like, Oh my God. I wonder if like that weird throat clearing is related to this. Could it be mm -hmm. the bladder? Like, and then that's when I started tallying up all my symptoms and I, going holy. I literally had that holy shit moment of this yes. could fix this. And yes. I didn't expect it to, I didn't go in thinking it's going to make everything magically better, but it kind mm -hmm. of did magically get better over time. I'm, closing in now on, you know, September 17th, I'll be one year post-op and 
most of my symptoms are gone. Now, I don't know how else you can explain that. Like there is no other way to explain it. There's really not. No. And it's amazing. Like how the body tells us things and we just ignore it or we don't pay attention or we don't follow our, our, our intuition. And we need to tune into that more. Mm -hmm. We need to listen to our bodies more and stop ignoring the things that we think might be something, but we don't want to bother. We don't want right. to bother with that. We don't want to, we don't want to go back to the doctors anymore. We have to advocate for ourselves and, and figure things out a lot on our own and follow our intuition that something is wrong. Like we're not crazy. Yeah. You know, something is wrong. Something was happening. Um, and like I said, my symptoms were not to the degree that your were that yours were, but I ignored all the little things that I felt were just my new normal. Yeah. I mean, but you're when I feel like, you know, when you go to the doctor and talk about these things and you're told, I don't really know what that's from, or you're perfectly healthy. Like I I know girls who have had tests for MS and Mm -hmm. because the doctor based on their symptoms thought that they had MS. So then you go to test for it. And then the doctors are like, oh, well, it came up negative. And she's like, but okay, so what is wrong with me? You literally just thought I had MS, but the test says no. So it's, that is where it is. You do have some outside factors that play into you kind of justifying it away, your intuition and saying, well, I don't know. The doctor tells me I'm fine. And other people are calling me crazy because they don't feel like that every day. Maybe it is in my mind. And you really do start to move away from trusting your intuition. And like I said, I, I knew like something in my body was literally screaming when I went to my pre-op, like, don't do this. It was like, I could not ignore it. It was so loud. And like I said, that was what, I mean, that was literally, I went off of that to cancel my surgery, to get new ones in and book my explant. And then it was just like, I, within a week of making that post, I knew I was like, these can't come out soon enough. I know this is the problem. And it was like, damn, you know, I'm so glad that I had that. And I think a lot of us have that intuition and that knowing, but you have to like be quiet long enough Mm -hmm. to listen. And that's a problem with, you know, I struggled with just slowing down. Mm -hmm. And when you slow down and you quiet everything and shut it off, like you will know kind of like, you know, things you need to do in life or decisions that need to be made. And so I'm just so happy that you followed your intuition and, and most of all that you're feeling better. I feel so much better. I feel so much better, but like what got me to my, my ex plant was, was not like a normal, like typical situation. Yeah. So, um, I decided that I wanted to consider having a revision done Mm -hmm. uh, because the original implants I had had were under the muscle and I was working out a lot and building my pec muscles. And they had in essence squished my implants and my implants had shifted over to the side. And so they were uncomfortable. They were uncomfortable. Every time my pec muscles would move, my implant would move. So I decided to see my doctor about having a revision done. And he was like, yeah, that's fine. We can take them from behind the muscle and put them in front of the muscle. And that was on May 28th. I had that done and I felt pretty good. Everything felt pretty good. They, I was healing. Okay. I did have one spot that was not healing well. And that, that kind of caused a big issue and led that in conjunction with just my body rejecting everything led me to the explant. I just immediately after I had my revision, I had this horrible hip pain that I'd never had before. Like I came home from the hospital with horrible hip pain. I had never had that before. So like the first implant, you know, um, that I had in 2017, it was like, I had these odd symptoms, but then when I came home from my revision, then I had these other immediate symptoms like the hip pain. And I like, could not breathe. Like I could not breathe. I could not take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. I felt like I couldn't breathe. And that is a horrible way to feel. You feel like you have weights on your chest that you cannot get off. And I could not work out. I could not work. I could not get through a workout. I couldn't lift the weights. And it was like, my brain was telling me to do it, but my body would not Mm -hmm. do it. 
I, I could barely get through a walk around the block. Like some, something was not right. Like my body was not accepting these implants. My body was trying to tell me you need to get these out. Yeah. Well, like eight weeks later, I developed a horrible infection. Um, I had redness, fever, swelling, inflammation. Like I was so, I was terrified. I was so scared. I was having pain going down my arm and up through my neck. I had actual drainage out through my skin, through the implant. Um, it's just, it's, it's so hard. Like it's the horrible place to, to be in. And I went to go see my doctor on Monday and he said, you, you have, you have to make a decision We're ha- you're having surgery tomorrow. You have to make a decision. Holy crap. Yeah. So I had to decide if I was going to save, try to save the reconstruction process by going through two to three more surgeries. Oh. And he had explained all of these things and he's talking and I hear nothing. I'm not hearing a word he's saying, except me telling myself, you're not doing this. Yeah. You are not doing this. These have to come out. And having them out was not even an option that was suggested. It was just all these other heroic things to try to save the reconstruction, but I was done. I just, I just blurted. I just want them out. I, I, I want them out. I'm not putting myself through this. I, I can't do this anymore. Like I'd had four surgeries in five years. Yeah. That's a lot. Reconstruct some. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. And, um, I mean, I was a mess. I was shaking. I was crying. I was hysterical. I was, I was just, I just want them out. I could not yeah. get to, to the next day fast enough to have them out. Mm-hmm. And, um, that was the best thing I could have ever had done for myself. And I look back and I'm like, why did I do that to myself? Why did I put myself through all of that just to, just to have boobs? I know. <laughs> why did I do that? I but know. I woke up from that surgery and I came home. I had no hip pain, none. <laughs> it was gone. Wild. I, I took a deep breath and I could breathe. It was like, that is the most magical of all. I would say is being able to breathe like a normal human breath. And it is Mm -hmm. so weird when you explain to other people, like you said it perfectly, you feel like there's something on your, which there are, I mean, they're sitting on top of your lungs, but like, (laughs) that is how I felt for years. And I literally thought I had asthma. Yeah. I went to the doctor and got a rescue inhaler because I was like, I am short of breath because I actually remember talking about this after I had my daughter. And I remember telling my friend, she had asked me to go work out or something. And I was like, I can't go. Like I get really, really short of breath. And I never in a million years would have assumed that it would have been from my implants. But the fact that like, I woke up, like you said, like I woke up from my surgery and could literally breathe it. Right. That was one that instantly it was just instant. like a light switch. It, I woke up from surgery and could breathe. It was, and I just remember being like, oh, this is so nice being able to take a full deep breath. It was just yeah. so overwhelming. And the hip pain that you mentioned, mm-hmm. God, I'm wondering now, like I did have hip pain. <laughs> it's weird when you talk to people who also have symptoms that you like, I just assumed that I, I always was like, well, my hips are always tight. Right. My hip pain was never like really terrible, Mm -hmm. but I had a girl McKenzie who I had on and she talked about, she talked about that hip pain to where she was like, I can barely walk some days. And then as I started talking, or she talked about it on the podcast, I had other women who were like, Oh my God, I have terrible hip pain. And I'm like, what? Like, no, it's just wild. Yeah. I mean, I came home from the hospital with that and, and I, it was like, I could not get comfortable to sleep because it, it didn't matter which way I laid. It just hurt. It hurt. And that was like a symptom that I had never had before. So, but within, so after I had the X plant Mm -hmm. within 10 days, I had lost 15 pounds without trying just done. My body was releasing all of the stuff that I was hanging on to. I mean, my body was just fighting itself for these last four years that I had these implants in and revision was just like, my body could not, could not handle it anymore. Yeah. was just done. I physically could not, could not keep them anymore. No. I mean, I I just, I'm so happy that you got them out. Mm -hmm. You're now healing. And I mean, I'll tell you that every day, every month that goes by from here on out, you're Mm -hmm. only going to feel better and better and better. It is an up and down process. And I didn't know that. I didn't know that like one day I'd wake up and feel so amazing that I would go and like overdo it 
And then mm-hmm. I would have a day where I felt really, really tired. Mm-hmm. And then that would bring back almost like PTSD. I would be like, oh my God, I can't go to the gym. When am I ever going to be able to go and like consistently do what I was doing? Mm-hmm. It may take me multiple years because I still am not to the place where I can go five days hard in the gym. Now, mm-hmm. there's a lot of other factors that play into that, but right now I'm up to where I can go two days a week, pretty hard. Mm-hmm. I wasn't able to go at all, like you said. Like right. I could not go and lift a thing. My body mm-hmm. literally felt like I had the flu every single day, like right before I explanted. It was awful, so awful. When I heard you say that on your podcast, I was just like, oh my gosh, that is that is the same thing that happened to me. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, oh, well, I'm not done healing. I just need to give my body more time. Yeah. But that was not the case. Like no. I could not make my muscles move. I couldn't breathe. Yeah. To even get through the workout. Like all I could do was maybe go around the block. That was it. But after the explant, I mean, I had lost the weight without even trying 15 pounds gone. My stomach bloat is gone. The hip pain is gone. My brain fog gone. Gone. I'm sleeping better. I'm eating better. I can breathe better. I, when people ask me, how are you doing? You know, how are you feeling? I'm like, I haven't felt this good since before I got cancer. Like I feel wow, amazing. amazing. And I'm just, I feel that I need to really talk about this and try to educate people as much as possible about symptoms or odd things that you think that are going on mm-hmm. that are related to this, that you thought were, was something else, because right. I would have never said I had breast implant illness. I would, those words never would have come out of my mouth. But now, did you ever have like, did you ever have any like of the suicidal thoughts or crazy thoughts or weird, any of that type stuff? No, I did not. That's I did good. not have any of those. I heard, I heard you talk about that and my heart just broke for you because I it was awful. I could not imagine. It that, was awful. That would, I had, I, yeah, I just, that would be a very dark place to be in there. It's, it happens not to everyone, obviously, but when I started talking about that, not long ago, I had so many girls message mm-hmm. me and it was, it was a lot to read through them because it's validating to hear that you weren't alone in that. And it's all, you know, honestly validating to hear that, okay, that wasn't me almost. It was part of the breast implant illness. But then Mm -hmm. these other women that are talking, I mean, most of them were moms. So Mm -hmm. in their heads, they're like, why am I thinking this? Mm -hmm. I mean, I had one who said, you know, she was like inside her house and her kids were playing on the back patio and she could hear them laughing and running around. And she was like, I just knew I should go out there and play with them and watch them. But all I could do was sit in my closet and like, think about they would be better off if I wasn't here. And it was like chilling (laughs) to hear someone say that. And it was like, it's not so much that they, that women are actually doing it. I hope I don't think, but I've also talked to women who message me and they're like, I had one the other day who said, I almost took my life last night. I had to call my friend And she had to talk me down and she's got her explant scheduled, but it's not like around the corner. Yeah. It's like a couple months away. And she's like, I'm so scared. And I'm like, please know that I am here. Like, I know that, you know, I've never met you, but like, if you can't get a hold of your friend and you're going through that, like DM me, like I'll get on the phone with you and talk you through that. Like, it is so real that it is like, those are the terrifying that was like a terrifying symptom that right. came, you know, with mine towards the end. And then uh, so many other women deal with it and they don't know at the time, if you're not talking to anybody about it, you're like, why am I thinking this? Right. Cause that's and what I kept going over. You don't want to talk to anybody about. No, that. I didn't even tell my, I didn't even tell my husband yeah. because I was like, if I tell my husband, he's going to be like on watch, <laughs> like on 24 hour <laughs> watch because he, he doesn't know. But I mean, right. it's, it, that's how bad it was. I told no one. And for so long, I was like, why am I thinking these things? I shouldn't be thinking they're in my head. Right. Why are There's they no there? Reason. There's, There's no, no reason. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just think of like, this is why we, this is why it's so important for people to talk about it and talk yes. about their situation and the symptoms that they had, because you don't think that something is important. Like a symptom that I say, maybe I don't think is important, 
but it's going to resonate with somebody who's listening and they're going to start connecting the dots yeah. and start, you know, making connections and putting things together. The more we talk about this, the more women will come forward. They won't feel alone. They exactly will hopefully be courageous enough to do the explant process yeah. to go through that process. Cause that's a whole nother, you know, emotional thing, looking at yourself so differently. Yeah. That, <laughs> and, and then the financial aspect of it, like it's not a, it's not an easy decision to just say, okay, I guess I'm going to go get an explant. You have to first be okay with, oh my gosh, I might be really flat. I went through that. Do I want to be really flat chested? And then it got to the point when I realized it, the symptoms could be related. I didn't care. Of course, I very quickly was like, I don't care what I look like, get them out of my body. But a lot of right. women struggle with like that body image of, will I be sexy? Will I be feminine enough? And so then they make the decision and then it's a financial, it's, it's a lot of money. It's a and, lot. You know, insurance companies, rarely they'll cover it if it's, you know, I've, I've heard from a couple of ladies who got theirs covered, but the majority don't, and they have to either pay out of pocket, put it on like a care credit or or, um, a credit card and then just pay it off. But it's a lot of, which is horrible that insurance companies aren't providing benefit for that because for people to get to that point to where they want them out, there has to be something wrong. But there has to be something wrong. Like yeah, they and, until benefit. it's recognized as mm-hmm. an actual real illness, insurance companies are looking at it as cosmetic. And well, that's it is true. No, it's not cosmetic. For some, it might be cosmetic, but for the majority of women that I speak to for explanting, they're explanting to save their life. It's literally a necessary surgery and it should be covered by insurance companies. It and, should be covered. Yeah. Yeah. And like the doctor, Dr. Rankin that you had on, um, a few weeks ago. And I listened to that podcast two times. I listened to it more than once because it's doctors like him that have a voice that the more doctors that are only doing explants will hopefully have an impact on insurance companies in the future. Like, yes, maybe they'll understand that this is a real thing that they're seeing case after case after case of people who have somewhat of similar symptoms who have an explant and those symptoms will go away. There's something there. Yeah. Like that is a real thing that insurance companies and other doctors need to start recognizing. And I think, I really do think it's going to catch on. Um, He said in that podcast that a lot of doctors are doing a lot more explant surgeries than they ever were a lot more than implant surgery or putting them in. So that's that is, promising to hear. That is a promising thing to hear. That's yeah. very promising. I did want to touch a little bit about um, what it's like after you have your implants out, because I know that there's women out there that feel the same way that I do. And when you look at yourself for the first time, it's, I, I mean, I cried, I cried because it's just like, how did I get here? Like mm-hmm. what happened? Like what just happened? How did I get here? And it's scary to look at yourself differently and to think, is my husband going to still want me? Am I still going to be pretty? How am I going to feel about myself? And I was, when I took my banjos off, I was by myself. I was physically shaking. I was crying. Um, And it was just like, okay, I just, I need to do this. I need to look at myself. I need to accept the way I am and then move on. And I did, I gave myself that time to look at myself, take the bandages off, accept where I am and just move forward because staying in that place or trying to think, you know, I wish, I wish this, or I wish that does not help. It does not help. Yeah. And I went to my husband and I said, I need you to come in here and I need you to, I I just need you to look at me. I need to show you what I look like. And he was like, okay. So I took my bandages off. I showed him and he was like, honey, it's fine. He's like, you look fine. You're alive. You're healthy. That is all I care about is that you're healthy. Good man. You know, the infection is gone. And, um, and that's all that matters. And anytime I say anything about it, like, you know, he's like, yeah, but you're alive and you're, and you're here and you're healthy. And that's the important thing. And I really want women to understand that you have to give yourself those few moments to, to accept yourself and you have to let other people accept you too. like give your husband the opportunity to take a look at you, take it in, 
have that moment together and know that it's going to be okay, that he loves you no matter what. He still thinks you're pretty. He still thinks you're sexy. And all you can do is move forward with, with where you are. Yeah. And, and that's, that's a really good point to make. Um, and I'm so happy your husband sounds like an amazing person. Um, mine had that same, like you're alive, you're healthy. I don't mm-hmm. care that you don't have breast implants right. anymore. Um, right. There are some women who I've spoke to that their husbands like aren't, I don't want to say aren't letting them, but like not, you know, that's a financial decision. And if you're married and the money is shared, they, you kind of do have to have that approval, I guess on, I don't know. I don't know. But I've talked to some women who are like, my husband doesn't want me to do it. And I'm just like, it, it blows my mind that there are men that don't want their wives to get their breast implants out for physical reasons when their wives are sick. Like, I just don't understand that. Um, That is actually heart-wrenching that a sick name. Yes. And I feel for women who then are so afraid to do it, even though they know they should. Here's another intuition thing where you know you should, but you're so scared of what could be or what, you know, your spouse is going to think or your partner's going to think that you can't, you cannot be strong enough to make that decision, but you have to like, yes, dig deep. You have to make that decision for yourself. You have to put yourself first. My and husband was fine. He supported when I decided to get him. He just supported the revision and he supported me getting out, getting yeah. them out. And that's the way it should be. Yeah. And if it's not, I mean, I'm probably going to come off really crass here, but my <laughs> advice that I've literally given in real time to this, I, there was one specific um, woman who I've been speaking with. In fact, her, she literally texted me like two days ago and was like, oh my God, my husband's on board. And I was like, we had this like huge moment because this has been going on for six months, her trying to convince him. But I, I say, if your husband doesn't approve and he, for whatever reason, and you're telling him, look, I want to get these out. I don't feel good. I think they're going to solve some of my problems. I've done my research and your husband still pushes back. I say, you keep pushing back and you continue to every single day, say something about it. Mm -hmm. And if at the end of the day, they are just not supportive of you getting implants out because of the way you're going to look. Mm-hmm. So you need to find someone else right? or go off on your own and do it. If it's something that you know you need to do, mm-hmm. th- you got to do it. It's your, at the end of the day, like it's your body. No right. one is going to tell you what to do or what not to do with your body. And that is a hundred percent my take on it. I absolutely brought it up to my husband and asked his opinion, but at the mm-hmm. end of the day, I knew what I was going to do. I knew. Right. And, okay and he was that. like, it's your body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And no m- man should tell a woman what to do with their body. So no, I, but I just, we, we, as women, we're not, not all, all women are as strong as say you or I, and that I we can stand up for ourselves and advocate for ourselves, and just whatever happens, happens. Like yeah. I have to do this for me. Yeah. If, this is going to cause a ripple effect and you're not going to accept me. Then I'll deal with that when it comes. Right. But, but women are not ingrained to do that. They're not ingrained. They're caretakers. So I'm going to take care of everybody else. I'm going to put myself last. So if this yep. is going to affect my husband or affect my family financially or affect whatever, I'm not going to do it. And that's wrong. You have yes. to put yourself first and you have to advocate for yourself first, find the right doctors, find the right support system. Yes. If husband doesn't support you. I mean, think about it. If if you were in a tragic accident and you were, you know, you didn't look like yourself anymore, you lost an extremity or something like that. Is your husband going to accept you or not? It's kind of the same thing. Like yeah. you're going to be different. You're going to look different. Is your husband going to accept you or not? Like you have to make that decision for yourself and deal with the ripple effect later. Yeah. I, I a thousand percent agree with that. And that's why I always, I mean, that's why I talk about this. That's why I offer literally day or night, like, I offer myself up just like if you have no one and, you know, you are in in that situation where your husband maybe isn't supportive, like I'll listen. I will at least listen to you talk about symptoms or talk about how you really want to get them out and just offering just, just an ear of someone who trusts you and believes you and is there for you. It's something about having someone in your corner is so important. And so I just, yeah, I, I think that that's at the end of the day where. We all need to get. Now I want to talk a little bit about, so you own 
What is it? The Good Day brand or the Good Day boutique? Well, it's called the Good Day brand, okay. um, but I have um, I started an online business. I don't actually have my own boutique. I do have my items in local a uh, local store. Um, cool. Um, but it started out of just trying to bring more good and spread good to, to people who might need it. Um, I have always tried to find the good in everything and the meaning behind everything. And that's how I just decided to start my own, you know, online brand to try to spread more good and positivity to people and, you know, bring some fun to myself, of yeah. course, you know, a, a creative outlet, you know, yes. something that mine. Yes. <laughs> something that I created that is mine. That's bringing good to people. And that's why I named it the good day brand, because I try, I find the good in everything. I really do. I love and, that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I, I started that, uh, almost a year ago. <laughs> wow. So is it just clothing or is it like jewelry? What types of so it's clothing it's accessories, it's jewelry and, it, and it's branded items as well. So okay. um, certain things that will like t-shirts and sweatshirts that will have certain sayings on them. And I just did another shipment of that because I'm like out of everything. Yeah. Um, I do coffee cups with, you know, be the good, find the good, see the good, just anything inspirational cool. I can put on a t-shirt or a sweatshirt or, you know, a coffee cup or journals that um, might bring some light to somebody who, who needs it. I love that. I love your aura. I knew I loved your aura. Well, typically what I do at the end of every episode is I I tell everybody, you know, I'm not going to rattle off all your social links. I will put everything in the show notes. Everything's always in the show notes. So I'm going to link your website, um, the blog, Instagram, Facebook, email, all that stuff. So that will all be there. If you guys want to contact Carla for anything, did I even say, did I even say your name at the beginning? (laughs) I, I, I don't know. I don't I think didn't. I didn't. I'm the worst host. I totally did not. I like just said it and I'm like, I didn't even like properly introduce. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> hey, this is real. This is how it goes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you guys want to contact Carla, I'm going to put all of her information in the show notes and definitely check out her Instagram. If you guys have questions about anything, including breast implant illness, I assume like all of my guests are always like, I'm open to speaking to any woman who feels comfortable or drawn to speak to me about it. Um, you are just amazing. And I'm so, so happy that you came on the show today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, I mean, is there anything else you want to close it out with? I, I just am so grateful for people like you that are speaking out about it because it has brought me to a place where I feel like, um, I'm so much happier. I feel supported. I know there's women out there that feel the same way I do. And, um, I just want women to, to not be afraid to follow their gut and find the support that they need. Um, and I'm just, I'm so thankful for you, Caroline. So just keep doing you. what you're doing because it is making, it's making a difference. It really is. Thank you. I feel exactly the same way about you. And that was just such a wonderful way to end it. You know, listen to your intuition, find a good support group. That was the best advice ever. So I just, I thank you so much for being on. Thank you. I'm- All right. Thank you so much. All right. Well, we will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you for checking out the CWC podcast. If you want to learn more about our community, make sure to check out the show notes.